The northern polar ice cap has been showing the effects of global warming more rapidly than any other place on Earth. Yet even as observations show accelerating change, climate deniers remain weirdly disconnected from reality. Repeatedly through the record hot summer of 2010, the popular anti-science blog What's Up With That invited readers to bookmark a bold prediction. Should we expect a nice recovery for the northern cap this summer due to thicker ice? The blog chirped, you betcha. I betcha. Meanwhile, in non-virtual reality, actual scientists looking at real data told a strikingly different story. So what we're talking about is the Earth's northern polar ice cap. And what that's made of is ice that's floating on top of the Arctic Ocean. And this is ice that's anywhere from like three feet at the thinnest to about 20 feet at the maximum. And we're interested in this ice for a couple of reasons. The first thing is right now it functions like a giant mirror on the top of the planet. And when sunlight comes in, it reflects those rays of light back into space. Well, ice has very different reflectivity than water. Water is a lot darker. So as that ice retreats, we get more dark water exposed. Now that incoming solar radiation gets absorbed and it heats up the water. And that also increases the amount of ice that melts. Now, something you need to understand too is that that ice is dynamic. Every winter it grows and continues out, and then every summer it melts back. The reason people are concerned right now is that in the past few years, we've seen a dramatic summer melting that takes the ice back to a point that's far, far, far smaller than we've ever seen it before. And in 2009, we set the stage for another year of this continued melting and reaching what are near record lows. In this image from the National Snow and Ice Data Center, the thickest multi-year ice is shown as green. Over recent years, the most sophisticated measurements have shown a sharp and steady decline in the area of this key indicator, while a greater percentage of the polar cap becomes thinner and more fragile. This is important though, not just because of how much ice we have in terms of extent. The thickness of that ice is also important. And in 2009, what we also released were some new satellite results where with first time, we were able to figure out what the thickness of the Arctic ice is all over the place. And what we're finding is that it's thinner now. And that also thinner ice is easier to melt than thick ice. And so all of this is setting the stage for predictions of an Arctic that is ice-free in summer months somewhere in the coming decades. The U.S. Navy's chief oceanographer, Rear Admiral David Titley, is keenly aware of the situation. Uh, we believe that within two or three decades we could see significant times in which there was almost no ice in the Arctic, and that has huge implications. Researchers at the U.S. Naval Postgraduate School, like Wiesław Maslowski, have sounded an even more urgent alarm. In a recent presentation, Maslowski predicted ice-free conditions in the Arctic Ocean as soon as 2016. As in any hard science, there is no substitute for seasoned researchers making empirical observations of actual conditions in the real world. Hello, my name is David Barber. I'm a professor at the University of Manitoba. My field of specialization is sea ice. I've been studying sea ice in the high Arctic for about uh, 25 years now. This past September, I had a remarkable experience on board the uh, research icebreaker, the Amundsen. Uh, we did a field research program into the uh, southern Beaufort Sea, which is north of the Taktaaktaak Peninsula, uh, at the north end of Canada's uh, landmass in the western high Arctic. Uh, the objectives of the study were to go into the late season multi-year sea ice in that area and to study what is going on with the decay of that sea ice. Uh, in recent years, uh, we've noticed that there's been a recovery in the aerial extent of sea ice in the Northern Hemisphere. 2007 was the minimum extent on record ever recorded. 2008 showed a recovery to that, and 2009 showed another recovery to that. So we were expecting to go into this area uh, to get an understanding of what was happening with the ice and what was promoting the recovery of this, thinking that uh, the sea ice conditions were starting to rebound towards where they used to be back in the uh, 70s and 80s. Unfortunately, when we got into the study area, we quickly realized that the satellites that we've been using to study the sea ice and to tell us what this type of ice was in the area 
uh, was incorrectly classifying the ice. Uh, we were doing a transect line north of Tuktoyaktuk, and we were uh, traveling in our ship at about 13 nautical miles per hour. That's about 25 kilometers an hour. And this is a speed that is almost exactly the same as the ship would have in open water. And this should not have been possible because the satellites were telling us we were in very thick multi-year sea ice. Unfortunately, the kind of ice that we encountered was something we have not seen before. It was a type of rotten ice that was a conglomerate of very small pieces of this multi-year sea ice that survives the summer and then grows the next year. And it's overlaid by a very thin layer of uh, what we call first-year ice, the stuff that grows annually that year. So the results of this study were quite shocking to the scientific world uh, in the sense that what we thought was a recovery in sea ice aerial extent is uh, not um, uh, accounted for by an increase in thickness. In fact, what we're finding is that the multi-year sea ice in the northern hemisphere is continuing to disappear at a very alarming rate. And if we continue on the trajectory we're on, we will no longer have multi-year sea ice in the northern hemisphere very soon. One of the most widely used measures of Arctic ice volume is the PIOMAS model from the University of Washington. In a recent presentation to the American Meteorological Society in Washington, D.C., Admiral Titley described what the PIOMAS shows. Okay, uh, the one on the top, the graph on the top right there, uh, what that talks about is Arctic sea ice volume. It shows this, this pretty long-term trend here. That long-term trend is down. There will be a lot of um, environmental impacts. There are a lot of ecological impacts. Camiso says the 30 years of satellite data we have on Arctic sea ice suggest that it's not likely to recover. As a scientist, he is intrigued by the trends, but personally, he worries about the planet's future. Well, it makes me feel sad. A lot of things can happen in terms of uh, impacts to the environment, impacts to the ecosystem, not just in the Arctic, but uh, for the, the, the whole, whole Earth. It's so obvious that this is happening, that people that live in the Arctic regions and the countries that border the Arctic are planning facilities based on there being less ice. There are people building warm water ports. There are oil companies preparing to do exploration. 200 kilometers off the west coast of Greenland in an area known locally as Iceberg Alley. A British company, Cairn Energy, has begun drilling the first of what they hope will be four exploration wells. And as well as the main platform, they have a second drilling ship ready to begin a relief well immediately in the event of a leak. And all around what they call the ice management vessels, equipped to physically tow icebergs away from the rig site. The Greenpeace ship Esperanza is near Greenland to confront the deep water drilling operation by British company Cairn Energy. An oil spill here would be incredibly difficult to clean up given the often harsh conditions of the Arctic. Good morning. This is the start of day two of our occupation of the Santa Don drilling rig here in Baffin Bay off the coast of Greenland. And we've just spent a relatively comfortable night here in our here in the camp that we've made on board. Set up and our banner is still hanging. So, even as billions are being spent to bring the benefits of deep water drilling to formerly inaccessible areas, climate deniers continue to tell each other that none of this is happening. I betcha. Uh, stay calm, this is not happening. As of August 2010, the what's up with that predictions of ice rebound were already non operative. As the ice extent continued to decline and headed towards yet another historic low volume. This pretension and posturing would all be kind of funny if the situation were not so dire. One wonders if decades from now our grandchildren will still be laughing.